we headed out at dawn. Although it was 30 degrees already and very, very humid. It's great to be on the water that early. I was looking forward to getting in, so I've not been spearfishing about four months. And I was really looking forward to trying to shoot some slightly different species. We decided to target this area of boulders in six to ten metres of water in a pretty strong current. There was loads of structure and I was immediately pleased to see large numbers of bait fish cruising around. I knew it wouldn't be too long before some of the larger predators turned up. I tried to position myself as well hidden as I could. The visibility was about 10 metres, although it doesn't look quite as good in this clip. And soon enough, a trevally cruised in over the reef and I shot it point blank. Now, I was absolutely stunned at the power of this fish. It was nothing like a bass or a pollock. This fish was somewhere between four and five kilos, about 10 pounds in weight, and it started spooling line off. I couldn't believe it. Once you shot a bass, they normally just kind of, I don't know, just stop fighting pretty fast. But this fish just kept going and going and going. I guess in the open ocean, in the sort of currents they get out there, the fish do have to swim pretty hard. They're always on the lookout for food. And I finally got it in. I just could not believe that a fish this small could not only take line, but it also started to drag me under as well. You know, I got a good shot on it, a tail shot. Sometimes they fight a bit harder, but putting a good shot in the center of mass. But it was pretty good to get a fish straight away like this. Very, very nice fish. Now, pretty soon after this, I dropped in and saw a nice coral trout. I approached it over the edge of this reef and put in a perfect stone shot. And this was a really interesting fish because it, it almost looks like a bit of a group and I read afterwards that it's part of the, the cod family, as all groupers are. It had a huge mouth and a plenty of teeth and shortly afterwards I saw a patch of dust being wafted up and I realised it was a, a goat fish, a goat fish feeding, it's a bit like a red mullet. I you know, dropped in, tried to stay as stealthy as I possibly could behind this rock and behind this coral and approached this goatfish nice and slowly to avoid spooking it and just as it started to turn and move away I put in the shot now frustratingly as I went back up to the surface I saw a number of trevally moving right in front of where I'd been now I'd have been in the perfect ambush position for these perfect spot, they wouldn't have seen me going behind those boulders yeah, there's a pretty big trevally there. That's a good 15 pounder. So, <laughs> pretty frustrating to miss out on that one. But with three fish in the bag now, it was time to move spots. Probably scared the majority of the trevally away. And it was time to look for somewhere else. But I was pretty happy with this nice sort of 10 pound trevally. Very nice coral trout and an excellent goat fish. We moved spots. And I dropped in again. Now, the boat driver had recommended this area, but after dropping in, I wasn't too sure about it. It was very flat, not a lot of structure, and no current. But what I did really enjoy was how colourful all the fish were. That was a real positive about spearfishing in Thailand. It's almost like being in your own personal tropical aquarium. All these yellow tailed fish, they were everywhere. Fast moving fish, it was pretty cool just sort of seeing them shoaling around. I was really hoping that a big trevally or maybe even a barracuda would cruise by on the hunt for these sort of fish, but it wasn't to be. So I started to look in the holes, hoping for a grouper. Now, possibly I should have brought a torch and had a shorter gun. This is a 100 centimeter gun, which was really not ideal for hole hunting, but it's all I've got on this trip at the moment. However, shortly afterwards, Simon saw a grouper free swimming between holes now he drops down here and you see him point towards where the grouper is so he points it out he comes back up i think i ask him where it is and he drops down again to sort of show me where it is because i couldn't quite see where it was in that position you can see him there just dropping down again pointing out where the grouper is and then i drop down there's a pretty strong current here you can see it racing past I always prefer spearfishing in areas with a bit of current. I do find those more productive. So I drop down here and I start to scan the holes. Now, what I realised reviewing this footage is I dropped down a bit too far back in the current. And that's why I have to swim a little way 
over this area of holes before I come across the grouper. And then I come across it just outside its hole and put in a good holding shot, but it's straight away, it's into the cave. So <laughs> I keep the line tight, get it as far as I can, and the gun's gonna float up. So I just dropped the gun, and then Simon went down and retrieves the fish. Good bit of teamwork here. Really, really enjoyed this fish. Now, one thing that was particularly good about this area was diving in 29 degree water, no need for a wetsuit, it was amazing. And here you can see the grouper, quite a nice fish, first ever grouper, pretty pleased to get that one. And after those few fish, our time that we paid for with the boat drive was up, so we headed back in. Really, really nice way to start spearfishing in Asia, never been here before, and good to get some fish straight away. Now, we did get mugged off a bit because we decided to give the boat driver the two browner fish, the grouper and the coral trout, and I found out afterwards that coral trout was delicious and it's one of the most expensive fish in Thailand. So a bit of a shame about that.